Sometimes you crave just like a big juicy steak and french fries, like steak frites, which is a classic French dish. But like who wants to blow their budget, especially during the week on an expensive steak and french fries? I'm gonna show you how you can do it all in the sheet pan, all during the weeknight. But before I get to the recipe, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and of course the bell icon so that you get all of my recipes and you'll be up to date on everything that I'm cooking in the kitchen. So I started with potatoes, you obviously saw me peel a russet potato and I wanted to show you how to make the perfect french fry cut. All right, so you cut on one side a pretty thin sliver and now you have a flat surface. So you're gonna turn it over on its side and we're gonna do it into like a little bit bigger than matchstick slices. And instead of frying it, I said we were gonna do it all in the sheet pan, so we're gonna roast these potatoes. I swear they're gonna make incredible french fries. I actually prefer roasted french fries to deep fried just because I don't feel as guilty, so I enjoy a few more. And then you're gonna slice them across, just like so. And you have a perfect french fry. Isn't that cute? All right, now this might take a little bit of time, so what I suggest is if you're busy and you know that you're gonna be doing this on a weeknight, is do it ahead of time. So I peel them and I cut them and I put them in water. That way they don't turn brown, see? Really beautiful. Now though, it is important that you get all of the water off. You do not want moisture in your potatoes. So I take a clean and dry like dishcloth and I scoop them out, put it on, and then I just dry it really well, I pat it down. This also really helps um, get some of the starch out, so it actually creates a crispier fry. There you have it, there are your fries. I'm gonna add these fresh ones to it. They look a little bit different, but they're all gonna taste delicious. Generous glug of olive oil, but you don't want too much because believe it or not, too much oil can make it a little bit soggy. And then generous salt. You're gonna need to salt it again when they come out, but I just put a little bit to start. My oven, I hear it binging, which means it's ready. So when you're roasting vegetables, make sure that they're not touching. That's gonna give that really golden, crusty, crunchy exterior for the fries. Uh, without steaming them, okay? So that looks really good. I'm gonna pop it in the oven because obviously the potatoes are gonna take a little bit longer to cook than the steak. All right, so while the potatoes are cooking, let's talk about the steak. And let's talk about the cut of steak. So the steak really is the star here, so you want a really high quality cut. I'm using New York strip, it's really beautiful. And here's how I do it, I usually just wait and when I'm grocery shopping and I see that it's on sale, that is the time when I buy it. And I know that night it's steak for dinner, but I don't sacrifice um, or compromise on the quality of steak. So if it's really expensive, then I'm just gonna forego it and do something else with a cheaper cut of beef like a stew. So here is our steak. Let's be real about the whole sheet pan thing. There are a lot of pictures and a lot of videos and recipes for sheet pans, and they're great. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it in the sheet pan. But the truth is, is that a really good steak, you don't wanna just throw on a sheet pan and put it under the broiler or roast it. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually give it a really good sear in a cast iron skillet. It only takes a minute, it's only one pan, but I promise you this extra step is going to give you a really tasty steak, just like in a restaurant. All right, so let's season our steak. Um, steak doesn't need much, especially if it has really good marbling like this one does. I mean, can you see the steak? It has that nice fat cap on the side, so it's going to have a lot of flavor in it. So very well seasoned. What makes a steak really tasty in a restaurant are a couple of things. Really high heat, they're not afraid to crank up the heat, and they're not afraid to season it generously with salt and with pepper. And even if you say like, my kids don't like pepper, they're not gonna taste it, but it is worth it to get a good amount of pepper and salt to kind of crust around the steak. I know, is your mouth watering? The other thing that makes a 
steak in a restaurant really good is butter. So be generous. Tablespoon of butter and a hot cast iron skillet is gonna make it taste great. Okay. All right, so I'm actually gonna crank my heat up, like really crank it up, because I want this steak, when it hits the pan, to really sizzle. Yes, it's exactly what you want. All right, now everybody has their own theory when it comes to steak. Some chefs really like to rotate it constantly, so it's getting that really golden crust over time around. I don't have time for it. I have kids, I have to get dinner on the table quickly, so I just leave it here for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to flip it, take the potatoes out, put it on the sheet pan in the oven, dinner is done. All right, so it's been like two minutes, maybe. You see that? You are never gonna get that if you put it on a sheet pan directly, okay? But I'm gonna turn my heat off, all right? Steak is gonna continue to cook, even though the heat is off. And the truth is, is that we do need, because it's such a thick steak, we do need to put it in the oven and bake it for a little bit. We have all of the flavor sealed in, and then we're gonna finish it in the oven. And our potatoes are almost there, right? They probably need maybe five minutes, which is exactly what the steak needs. I'm gonna make a nice little well in the center. Right there. Boom. How about that? Back in the oven for like maybe five minutes and dinner's ready. I hope you can hear that crunch. It's really crunchy. Literally, just like in a French restaurant, like thin and crispy. I should let you know that I let the steak rest for just a couple of minutes. You always wanna let your meat rest before you cut into it so that it has a chance for all of the juices to like come back in. A perfect steak, a delicious crispy fry, and weeknight dinner is done all on the sheet pan with a little bit of help from a cast iron skillet. I'm Roni Proder. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and let me know what other kind of weeknight dinner creations you wanna see.